Hi, my name is Alan O'Prey and I'm the CEO of CSA UK. The video you're about to watch is a day in the life of one of our service delivery engineers. We've put this video together to ensure we attract the very best talent to CSA, but also to ensure that you have the capability and the aptitude to be able to carry out this demanding job. Now it's not to scare you off, it's just to point out the daily duties that will be required to be able to perform at your very best. The job requires you to work a height on a daily basis, sometimes four or five times a day, a height of nine, 12, even 15 meters, so it's not for the faint-hearted. It also requires you to work in inclement weather, such as snow, wind, and rain on a daily basis. You will also be working on streets, on roads with high footfall and busy traffic. Potentially have colleagues, clients, and even the general public around you. Going in and out of customers' houses can be a challenge, as there are a lot of things to remember to ensure the customer has the very best experience. The job has some exacting tasks, which requires a high level of concentration throughout the day, such as splicing fiber optic cables. We want to ensure we attract the very best talent to CSA UK, but we also want to ensure that the job is for you. We want you to enjoy yourself. So if this job is for you, based on the things I've said in the video just before, then we'd love to see you apply, and I can't wait to see you out on the ground, getting stuck in. Thank you. Phil is impressed in installing home broadband services, a job that usually has him working solo, but today he's joined by two trainees, Vinny and Mark, who are eager to learn the ropes. His tasks include testing the network, setting up routers, and troubleshooting customer issues. Hi, Linda, it's Phil, I spoke to you this morning. Reassuring the customer is a necessary part of the job, so it's important to follow our etiquette guidelines. Get it all nice and neat. Phil starts by logging into the field service management software, which helps streamline the process with tools for scheduling, navigation, and task updates. So in regards to breaking ground, is if you had to physically dig on the property. The job begins with assessing the property to find the best way to connect the broadband, like locating the nearest network point, often an underground chamber or telephone pole. Phil performs a quick 30 second crack test on manhole covers to ensure they're safe to lift as they can degrade over time. He also uses a gas detector to check for hazardous gases in confined spaces. Every step of the installation must be photographed accurately. They've got a CGD here and then they've got a C barriers. As long as you've done that, you're absolutely fine there. Next, they feed a lead cable through by hand, ensuring it doesn't tangle. Tape it on well, because you do not want this coming off. Vinny carefully pulls the cable and unwraps its binding. It is detached from the pulley at the other end. Pull a bit more. Right, that'll do it. They use an optical power meter to confirm the cable meets performance standards. Clear labels are added to the cables, making it easier to identify the right one later if a customer reports a connectivity issue. Phil then starts splicing the fiber optic cables. He strips the outer coatings, cleans the fibres with alcohol wipes and uses a cleaver to make a precise clean cut. The fibres are placed in a fusion splicer which melts and fuses them together using an electric arc, creating a low loss connection. A heat shrink splice sleeve protects the spliced area from moisture and dust. The customer's splice point enclosure, which houses the splice, is weatherproof to shield it from rain, dust and physical damage. The next job entails a pole to home installation, and Vinny uses a telescopic pole to measure drop wires, which are the cables from poles to buildings. They tap the wood and telephone pole to check its integrity. A hollow sound could mean rot, making it unsafe to climb. 
Engineers will find themselves working in the street every day of the job, as well as climbing poles that are up to 12 metres high, making it essential they are comfortable with working at these heights. Once Phil is secure, he lubricates the ports and then starts testing the connections with an optical light meter. It is quite common to work through cold weather and rain and the engineers need to take this in stride. Finally, the cable is secured to the customer's wall with brackets. Phil splices and then connects it through the customer's splice point. Coiling excess cable to prevent signal loss. He carefully logs the installation while Mark takes photos of the finished setup. With everything double checked, it is time to head off to the next job, ready to repeat the process.